Hey there, I'm Sean C. Davis, and I want to show you how I work with icons in my front-end projects. Now, icons are something that seem to appear in every single project these days. So I've built a consistent system that I can work with regardless of what front-end framework I might be using. Let's take a look. Now, for me, this whole system revolves around the use of Figma. I find Figma to be this wonderful tool that makes working with icons really easy and really easy to integrate into my code. And I'll show you what I mean. Here in Figma, I just have a blank project. Now first, let's go find an icon. And for that, I like to use a site called the nounproject.com. But there are plenty of options out there. I'm gonna search for an icon. One that seems to come up on every project is maybe a check mark. So let's search check mark. And we see we have a lot of options. And so I can find a style that works for me. Maybe I like this one. And what I'm going to do is download the SVG. Come back over to Figma and I drag the icon onto this working area. And it's really, really big at first. Look, it's 1600 by 1600. Now that might differ depending on where you got the icon from. The other thing the noun project does is it tends to group things and wrap them in kind of a slightly weird way. Like here's an extra line that doesn't seem to really be doing anything. The one thing I'm always going to do is pull them outside of any sort of grouping or frame that they come with and then I delete that frame. And now this looks like a little extra artifact here. So let's delete that and see if anything changes. It still looks fine. So I'm gonna keep it as is. Now, the next thing I do is I click this little icon over here that says constrain proportions. And that is going to let me resize this using specific values. And I look between the width and the height and I pick the higher number and then I set that to what I want the maximum of any side of my icons to be. And it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you're consistent. So for example, I might choose 100. And so we're gonna make all of our icons max out at 100. And then I can zoom in here. So now that we have the width set to our maximum dimension, we're next going to create a frame. And we can right click on this and come to frame selection. Let's go back and select the vector or this SVG file that we pulled in and we can add some constraints. So we want it to be in the center here of our frame. And then on our frame, let's change it to 100 by 100. Okay, now we can kind of stop there and see how we can pull SVG code directly from Figma into our project. And we can do this just by clicking Right, right clicking here on the frame, coming to copy paste as, and then going to copy as SVG. And then if you go into a project and you can just paste and you have this code. Now something goofy happened here. When we pasted this, notice our width, height, and view box are all set to 101 pixels. The reason that happens is because I don't have an exact integer of the position of this artboard in my Figma project. And so what you could do is you could just round one of these up or maybe you wanna actually start at zero, zero. So go ahead and do that and then we can find it again. And now if we copy as SVG, remove that, paste again, and you can see we are 100 by 100. So this is a great simple way to be able to pull SVG code from Figma directly into your project. You don't have to download anything, read files or anything like that. And you can do this and repeat this process for every icon, or you can build a system that makes it easier to work with in your designs in Figma as well. And I'll show you how to do that. Back in Figma, what we can do is we can turn this frame into a component. We can right click and we can come to create component. You see there's a keyboard shortcut there as well. And now we're gonna call this icon so that it's a little bit easier to find in our project. And we have our first icon here. So if I wanna use this in a page, I can come create another page in Figma, add an artboard, make that a little bit bigger. And if I come to assets, I can then see the component and I can pull it onto the page. Now, a lot of times you're probably gonna to wanna to change the size of this. And notice if I change the size of the frame, the shape inside doesn't change. This is because we had set the dimensions to center and center, so they're, they're automatically set. They're not gonna change based on the size of the frame. That helped us get positioned initially, but it's not gonna help us in the long run. So back on your page with your component, go directly in to the checkmark vector file, and then set these back to scale. And we'll see that we don't have to go through this process for future icons. So then when I'm on this page and I 
uh, this, this should update automatically, which is great, and now it scales. And this is kind of the beauty of using components in Figma. But let's say we want to add another one. So we're going to go back to our page with our components. We're going to create a new variant. So over here on the right panel, we can click new property, choose variant. And then what we'll call this is maybe name. And within icon, we have default, but we don't really want the value to be default. Maybe we want it to be check mark. And then in here, we can click this plus icon for a new variant. And this might happen. You might get kind of a goofy layout. If that happens, let's make Figma automatically lay out these variants for us. So select the overall icon frame and then come over to your sidebar and choose auto layout. And then it doesn't really matter what you choose in here. Maybe you want to put them in the center and you can, you can also choose a space between each icon and some space between the overall container for these icons. Right now, this seems fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into my new variant and I'm going to pull my new icon in there and see what happened here is it it put this icon in here. But again, remember for me in the noun project, these icons tend to be humongous. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take all of these and I can't really see, I'm flying blind, but it's OK. We're going to take all of these and we're going to pull them out of the the export frame but we're going to keep them inside this variant container so we'll delete that and then maybe we maybe we group these and what we'll do is we're going to resize them again blindly so constrain the proportions change to 100 and now i'm going to choose center vertically or center horizontally and center vi vertically and it will center relative to this container here so center and center and now we can see it and then we can click our old check mark, get rid of that. And you might not want to group. You might instead want to take these and create a union so it's just one shape. And that's fine too. Whatever really works for you. And notice now this still says name too. So we can change this variant name over here. And maybe it's called delete. I don't know. Names are hard. And then when we want to export, we just right click copy and paste as svg come over to our code and we paste and we've got this code so I hope you can see that once you get into this and kind of get the feel for it this is a great way to be able to work with components in your project now one last quick tip before we go is that you might not necessarily want your icons to always be this black color and you notice that when you export if you come all the way to the end of the path it's going to say fill is black you can change this value to current color in camel case and it will inherit the color of the closest ancestor that has a color value set to it so if you're using this in a button and you've set the text of the button then this svg is automatically going to take on the color of the text in the button and this is hugely powerful so i absolutely recommend replacing the fill value with some specific value and instead inherit using current color or alternatively you can delete this attribute. And then in CSS, you can set a rule for SVG paths to inherit their parents' color. All right, that's it for now. I hope this was helpful. I'm Sean C. Davis, and I will see you next time.